Yep. Uh, before that, number 19, as he's coming down in edge setting right there with that inside arm, do you have times when he's squeezing and forcing it down and times when he is wrong arming it to bounce it out? Yeah. Because you want so, to go outside. Yeah, that's a great Where question. Trying to force it. When is yeah, when so gone? great debate on that is, right, the wrong arm, the edge set, how, how do you play that? Okay, we've done it both ways. The big thing is you need to have the complimentary player working with that. What we've settled on most recently is edge set, okay? And not that that's right or wrong, we've done it both ways. I like the edge set more than I like the wrong arm because I think it brings our sand back into that picture tighter, okay? But as I said before, is we in our group run fits, our safeties work with our, our perimeter guys. Um, it's a drill we run every single day, okay? So we perimeter fit. If that, if that overlap comes underneath and wrong arms are really tight, our safety's got to widen, okay? If he adds sets, he's sitting more. So our safety really plays off the ass of our overlap. And I, I, I tell her, I'll tell her overhang he's never wrong. We prefer him to do this, but if he does, flatten it to come underneath to be a bowling ball and take as many pins out as you can. Okay? Um, but in general terms, I like that set better because it tightens that picture down. Okay? The thing I like about it, we do come under, then it really is bringing everything to the ball and spilling everything out, which I don't mind either. So I don't, I don't think either is wrong. The only thing that's wrong is if my safety and my overhang end up on the same level. Then we have a problem. Then we have a problem. Yep. Uh, what are your safety triggers for your safety? What are the triggers for your safety? Uh, <laughs> depending on the surface, let's say we have a, uh, a tight end surface, okay? He's literally leading from tight end to center, and he reads light like a linebacker. Our strong safety, we have a, a free and a strong safety. Our strong safety, guys, is a linebacker with a little bit better skill than our inside guys. Um, but he's reading the box, okay? And our second, our free safety, generally speaking, is never in there. He's our space guy, okay? So if we get like 20 personnel, we'll spin our safety down, and then he's a he's a window reader, um, depending on the alignment of that of the uh, of the fullback and field and boundary and a couple of those like that. But the reading window and the other one's more of a quote unquote pass to number, okay? So even within it, like in our scheme, our, our two outside guys and our three, four, and our two safeties, they're both safeties and they're both outside linebackers, but they're radically different people and positions and responsibilities. So trying to get that right kid in the right spot is generally a challenge for us. Yep. For your uh, defensive tackle, do you need to still more to penetration and no hands or with shoulders or? Yeah, we, we just try to tell them no penetration. We just we really try to get their hands to the hip to the gap we're going to. And if we can get like if one of the first plays in the video is not doing a good job. Our kid did a nice job of squeezing, but he didn't get his hands on the hip of that tackle, and we saw a tackle come down and just drill our sand back and just knock him right on his ass. Okay? That's on our D tackle. Okay? I mean my back is gonna get a little something, but it was like the very first play if you go all the way back to that Jeremy, the very first play in the video. It's a team in white, I'm not sure what coach is. The very first one, I think it was the one that won play. Well anyways, but yeah, we want to get a hands on that hip so that if that tackle or guard is going to release down to our socket level, we want to get him off his tracks a little bit. How do you align your D-alignment? Because they're on an angle, it looks like. Yep. Do you have guards and tackles depending on strength? How do we'll, you... we'll Oki front, we'll eagle front, depending on the situation. Um, like, yeah, some of those years, that, like here, I mean, that depends really on a tilt. And the reason why, like, he's tilted so much, honestly, we couldn't get that kid to squeeze off the football. If we just let him play traditionally, he's going to be right here. But they're always on the outside of someone. They're yeah. going to start outside always, and not, yeah, not have always, From all to end to the gap they're going. Okay. Okay. So hit this play because he does a good job of squeezing, but he hasn't touched this kid. Yeah. Watch our back and just get lit. Okay. 
and not a good way for our backer to start the day off because that shouldn't happen. Okay? So we see that, you know, he didn't touch him. He put his pinky on him, but all right, our linebacker just took a shot there that he needed to take. Okay? So any other questions? Yep. What are inside backer triggers? Whatever it is. <coughs> They're just reading the light in front of them. It's full plug, full. And yeah, so we get a pull. Uh, a plug is an open door. A flow is a closed door. And honestly, our linebackers, we don't even, we don't even pass that on. I don't. Our, our generator two inside linebackers couldn't catch a ball and threw it right to them. And they're honestly, they all in space are more likely to get a penalty than they are anything else. So we we don't tell them that pass is even part of an offensive. Thing for those guys, they just they're coming kind of around. So um, yeah, I don't know. We, we haven't had a kid to catch a ball in ten years. Do you have a split split a double team, not take two and go down? We'll, we'll split and sit. We'll try to split it. If you can't can't split it. We'll sit it. You know, I mean, best we can. I mean, depends on the situation. Um, you know, like if he's hitting that gap and he's getting split, and he's, he's pretty low. It's gonna be hard for those guys to leverage him much beyond that. Um, and ideally, if we can get him to pop his shoulders through that split, we win for the most part. Um, but, you know, if I had a big dude, if I had a big guy, I'd have him split it and, you know, probably grab one of the kids and pull him down with him or something like that and try to pile it up. But we just, for the most part, try to split it. Front on the kid. How much tapping do you do you do during the week? No I, stuff. None. We're the least physical football team that you're ever going to see. Monday through or Saturday through Thursday. We we do the Pete Carroll stuff daily, um, but we don't live tackle. I try to minimize how many hits our kids have. Really There's enough hits on a Friday night. I mean, our our kids on Saturday mornings are it's a mash unit. So I always say that we're the least physical physical football team that you're going to see. And, and again, that's not the way my dad taught, taught football. There's nothing wrong with the way he did it. I don't think there's anything wrong with the way we do it. Um, we, are, we work, like I said, on responding to triggers against bags, and that's what we do. And when it comes to Friday night, that's when we do our hitting. Um, the other thing, my thought on tackling is this. Any one of you guys could walk on my field in probably three minutes, pick out the three kids that are going to be their best players, the most physical. I don't need to see my most physical kid hit the shit out of one of my other kids. I know who can tackle and who can't. You know. Now, some of those gray areas you don't know, but you know, scrimmage and that kind of stuff, and even live balls get there, that type of thing. But I'm ultra conservative on the number of shots that our kids take. Um, you know, we, we thought of an inside run, that kind of stuff. But if someone ends up on the ground at a practice, they trip. Everything's up. Stay off the grass. Saturday mornings, how, do you, how did you, uh, did you always implement the Saturday morning the lifting? And no, Saturdays are off for us. We don't do anything on Saturday. I tell the kids to go to a Badger game. I tell them to go, go fishing, go hunting, go do whatever the heck it is that they want. Saturday's a dead day. For everyone, I tell my my coaches if they do anything football wise and catch them, will kick them in the ass. Go find a wife, go find your girlfriend, go find whatever it is that they want to do. We do not do anything on Saturday, period. And I hold myself to that too. I will not look at anything on a Saturday. Other than we got like just like our league pool and, and that kind of stuff, just the maintenance stuff. Saturday's a dead day. We need a day off. It's family day. <coughs> 